Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video on Civilization 6. And today I would like to tell you guys about some noob civilizations for those of you that are noobs out there. So um, let's just jump into it. It's pretty easy. These civs are really easy to play. Uh, some of them, actually all of them except for one require some set of expansions. So this is for, you know, noobs and kind of if your friend's like, hey, buy the expansions. If your friend makes you buy the expansions and you've never played Civilization before, they're a jerk. The Civ, the, the no, don't buy the expansions, don't use them because they make things so freaking complicated. All right, let's get into it. So the first civilization that I would recommend for noobs is Macedonia. And really, it helps because it simplifies science for you, right? So uh, the building you get, the bat, Basically, I think that's what it's called. Um, it basically makes it so if you build that building in your encampment, you get extra science for building soldiers. And I think that as a noob, you're going to be building extra soldiers anyways, because you're not going to be as good at soldier placement as other players. So you're going to need more soldiers. You might as well make it worth it. And as a noob, you're probably going to forget to build, like if you need more science to build a whole bunch of campus districts, right? Um, you also get Eurekas and Inspirations if certain cities have certain districts, which is always nice. And then you get the Hispaspis, that's how you say it. And then of course there's the ability where if you conquer a city with a wonder, all your units heal. Um, but the main thing is that whole science bonus you get for just making soldiers. That's a really nice one because I think, uh, I especially remember when I was a noob, there would always be something that I forget, whether it's economy, or science, or happiness. So it's gonna help you because you're gonna have that science constantly coming in and you're gonna be able to just keep researching and at least stay scientifically as powerful as the other players. You might not be financially or militaristically, but scientifically, that I argue is the important one. Just because if someone's more scientific than you, especially certain units, they're going to have one unit that can take out like three of yours. So that's Macedon. The next one, a lot easier. Macedon's kind of for me like the top of the noobs. The next one is the Dutch, okay? Now the only thing that is really nice, well there's a couple things about the Dutch. Uh, the first one that helps you out is you get one plus culture if you get a trade route that is sent or received from a foreign civilization, right? So you just get culture if people trade with you. And culture's nice because I forget culture. That's one of the things I tend to forget is culture. And I end up having a crappy government because of it. Uh, but the main thing with the Dutch is a river will give you a two plus adjacency bonus to campuses, theaters, and industrial zones. Which is really, really nice. Uh, and a river naturally gives a commercial hub the bonus. So, it simplifies the game for you, right? If you are the Dutch, then you just, you know, if you build cities next to rivers, you're good. You know, and it kind of helps because I think as noobs and even pros, it's kind of scary for me to build a city that's not next to a river because I don't get the river, I don't even know what it's called. Isn't it called like the water wheel or something? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The, the thing that, the river wheel thing that gives you food and production. I, I hate not having those. But it makes it easy. Just build all your districts down the river, and you can build it on both sides of the river, so then they'll eventually get the district adjacency bonus as well. So that's why I would go with the Dutch. If you're a super noob, like you've never, ever, 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 ever played this game before, this is the civilization that I would recommend you go with. This is basically the Dutch. I mean, there's also the Podler, which you can build on a coast or a lake. But and it, but it needs like three, three tiles around it, and it's just generally a bastard to put down. But if you want to, you can go with the Podler. So next civilization, uh, one of the I think they're considered S tier, is the Germans. Okay, the Germans are really 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 good because they can build one more district than their population will allow. They get an extra military policy slot. They get a combat bonus against city-states. And they have the Hansa. So with Germany, you get the Hansa, 
which basically is it simplifies the district placement for you. You know, putting them next to commercial hubs is a really good strategy. You get the extra military policy slot so you can give yourself extra bonuses because I think as a noob in Civilization VI, half the time you forget what your policy bonuses are so you don't use them anyways. And then of course, you get combat against the city-states. The extra district is just good for all players. Noobs, I think it's a less so kind of thing because, you know, your, your city's going to grow anyways. So, you know, and as a noob, you probably won't optimize it to really need that extra district from the population. But you never know. But that 7 plus against city-states is really nice. Because sometimes, you know, especially when you're a noob, it's hard to gauge how powerful something is. And I think that sometimes you forget, hey, it's a city-state, it gets naturally better combat bonuses. So it gives you a combat bonus to put you on even ground with the city-state. Now the last uh, group of people that I would recommend you use if you are a noob is the Zulu. The Zulu are really nice because they get the MP Warrior, which just kind of is a cheap maintenance unit, you know. And I think if you're going with the Zulu, you're going to want to build the encampments because when you build an encampment, you can build cores and armies without having to build the extra buildings. And if you have to build the extra buildings, like the armory and the military academy, it gets kind of confusing because then it costs more, so you need to build commercial hubs. So it kind of helps you deal with your finances a lot easier as a new player. I think finances are another complicated subject in civilization that can sometimes get a little overwhelming with how many different ways you can make money in this game. So it simplifies finances for you. You can just build the encampment. You don't have to build military academies and armories. You know, and that's good. You also get that loyalty bonus, which is really nice if you're trying to figure out rise and fall. And then what you also get is, um, sorry, is you get that bonus where if you have the cores unlocked and you have armies unlocked and you take a normal unit or a core and conquer a city, it kind of gets an upgrade. That's really good because I think sometimes noobs, it's hard to, you know, manage that combining units into cores and armies, you know. It just kind of helps you along that way and it helps show you, hey, this is how much powerful, more powerful your units can get. But that's the four civilizations that I would recommend if you're a noob. Uh, pretty much all of them, except for the Dutch, revolve around war, making war easier. Uh, and they just kind of, all of those uh, civilizations simplify the game for you. Uh, except Macedon, it kind of does in its own little way. But if you're a professional player, if you're actually good at the game, what kind of civilizations would you recommend noobs to start out with? I mean, out of these four, uh, my personal pick would be the Dutch, just because their river bonus is already really strong, and their trade route bonus is, you know, kind of passive. You don't really need to manage it, and it just makes everything easier to play as the Dutch. It just makes life simple. Just build stuff, build, build stuff next to rivers. It'll be okay. So I'm Pacific Casual Gamer. Thank you for watching. I'm all done. Uh, if you want to see more videos on Civilization VI, go ahead and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next one.